keeping reptiles as pets is just like keeping any animals that we keep as pets. Like all of them were wild at one point, but we're at a point now where they've been bred in captivity, captivity over and over for all these years. So you have all these different morphs and stuff that no longer could survive in the wild, just like a little chihuahua couldn't survive in the wilds. Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle. And I'm Den. And this is Elle's Reptiles. So this week's video, this week I had a whole other video, but then this came out two days ago as you're watching this and we thought we should talk about it. So if you haven't seen it already, we're going to be watching the reality behind keeping reptiles as pets on BBC Earth that I was interviewed for. Reptiles are such a popular pet choice. Does social media paint the full picture of what it's like to own one? I think, first of all, social media does not paint the full picture. Yeah, I completely agree. Social media, some social media doesn't paint a full picture. I feel like we try to paint a full picture. Yeah. And I feel like most reptile YouTubers or even like TikTokers, most social media people try to paint a full picture. Also, I don't like the part, like this snippet in the very beginning. The lady that was not a reptile specialist, she just used scissors on his eyes. He is now blind. Saying it that way, like cutting it that way makes it sound like I just let some random lady cut my snake's eyes up. I mean, you guys, you guys all know, she was a vet. There's a lot of unboxing videos, like my pets just arrived. I think the whole pet unboxing thing, I think that's just more of an excitement. An yeah. excitement that I got my pet today. Yeah, and it's actually like super helpful for me because I have anxiety. So anytime I get anything in the mail, I look up videos to see other people getting in the mail to see, mm. like to prepare me for what is about to happen. Yeah. This is a girl in her car. They're both wearing scarves. It already has like this air of it being scary, <laughs> but like people putting sweaters on their reptiles. I mean, as long as it you doesn't do stress you. them out. People put sweaters on their dogs and on their yeah. cats all the time. And as long as it's not stressing them out. This girl's written, this better go viral. And she's put her hand into the mouth of a bearded dragon. Now, intentionally agitating your reptile. I mean, that's not. I don't know what video he's watching, but he makes a comment about her putting her hand into a bear dragon's mouth to be bitten, having recordings of like snakes mm. biting you, like, cause you know that snake's gonna bite you. Yeah. And be like, I'm gonna squish this fear mm. for so many people, as opposed to, no, I'm gonna make this bearded dragon mad so that they can bite me and then I'm gonna shove my hand in it out. Like, that, those are two different things. Yeah, I mean, doing it for clout versus doing it for education. This bearded dragon, but snakes as well, so that they're you know, in striking position, trying to attack the people around. I think a lot of those videos, though, the situations where the snakes are striking like that, I mean, already they're in a defensive position, and I think they are just recording it. I feel like I should say, though, like, all the people that I worked with on BBC for this, um, I say worked with, they just interviewed me. The big interview was, like, two and a half hours. They were all so nice. <laughs> they were super nice. They were super excited to do this. Um, Dan was super excited. When I was showing him my animals. Dan's the uh, yeah. the interviewer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I was showing him my animals, he was talking about how cool they were and he was super excited to see them. So I'm not saying anything bad about them. Now, um, one thing that he did mention to you mm -hmm. is that he did attempt to reach out to content creators mm -hmm. that are in the UK. So I got an email from BBC basically saying, hey, we are working on this new... Um, little mini series. We are reaching out to see if you'd be interested in being in the reptile portion of it. And I think the email said it was a, a global to take a look at how reptiles are kept globally is what the email said. When I did the first interview, they actually like, they were super nice. Um, and we talked and they were like, Oh, like we, you're very positive. Like we want that. Uh, but we would prefer someone from the UK and they said they were actively looking for someone from the UK. So if they didn't reach back out to me, basically not to take it personally because they wanted someone from the UK. He's just fantastic. He is super cuddly. He'll come out and glass surf and yes, cuddly. <laughs> also in this whole thing, um, I didn't <laughs> like, they kept in that he's cuddly, which he is cuddly. Um, but I also like have this whole thing about loving keeping reptiles to like teach kids and be able to teach people about them and stuff. So yeah. I kind of wish they kept that part in. I don't know. Like I've just been so fascinated by these animals my entire life and being able to actually watch them and the things that they do and teaching my kids because I grew up actually afraid of snakes specifically. So being able to teach him that and teach him that just because 
he doesn't understand that thing doesn't mean that he should be afraid of that thing and that he should instead respect the wild. Yeah. Not just like keep him because he's cuddly. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, they, they were definitely trying to keep a very specific atmosphere, I yeah. think, to push the point that they were driving, even though it might not have been the point that we thought. Yeah, it definitely didn't go in the direction that we expected it to go. Yeah. Yeah, the care requirements are pretty vast. Most of the time when you get a reptile, it's basically up to you to do that research. Once again, I mean, the most important thing is it's your responsibility to do the research. Which, Don't go into a pet store and expect them to give you all the information. This whole, all the pre-interviews leading up to this interview, that's kind of what I thought this whole thing was going to be, just like a globally talking to like creators and um, rescues and stuff, basically encouraging people to research. Um, I think my personal biggest struggles would be vets, um, finding good vets for my animals. By far, that is your biggest struggle. Yeah. Well, not anymore. Now we finally got it, but overall, yeah, but in to the find end, it to begin with. Yeah, that was the biggest struggle. Mm -hmm. What do you think influences the choices of people's favorite reptiles to have as pets? I definitely think that social media does contribute to that. Um, but then that's where like the reptile that was my answer that comes question. in, like always trying to be like, Hey, like this is important. You need to research. I know, like, I don't think that that was the question he asked me. I, I don't think that that was my answer to that question. What do you think influences the choices of people's favorite reptiles to have as pets? Like, I feel like my answer to that question was basically just, it depends on what you want as like in a pet. Um, I think a lot of it is just kind of what you can take care of so like if you don't have space for a a big four foot tank then maybe this animal's not right for you if you only if like humidity like if you don't want to spray down a tank every day or twice a day then maybe you should look at desert sort of animals as opposed to so I think it's just kind of just dependent on that person's situation I think like I feel like he then he asked me a follow-up question basically saying do I think social media can influence people to get pets and then to that i said i definitely think social media does contribute to that but then we as a community then come in and say hey you need to research blah 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 words yeah. words that's kind of irritating because mm -hmm. that's not what i said is there a worry about the internet and the growing availability of reptiles online there are a few websites that people just kind of know that you probably want to stay away from that one because they import a lot of animals or they farm breed these animals. Okay, so this is the question. Is there a growing worry of getting reptiles online? Okay, this question, I know for a fact that my answer was something along the lines of, no, it actually is um, basically much better because then like the um, breeder can um, like talk to people and you can get your care instructions. Hopefully not, because selling them on the internet, at least you are in the place where the best information is. And a lot of times I know that people that do sell them online will make you um, like fill out paperwork and stuff. And they'll actually want to see the tank set up before they send you that animal. I know Josh's frogs, if you order any kind of animals from them, you have to agree to a drop-off time, like a FedEx drop-off time or whatever, and you have to fill out a questionnaire. Is your tank set up? Do you understand how to um, keep the humidity where it's supposed to be? Do you understand how to do the temperatures? Do you have food for this animal? So selling them online, I honestly feel like a lot of times is a good thing just because that information is there and they can basically vet that person. And they're like, no, but there has to be like, there has to be negative things too. And I'm like, oh, and then he was like, well, what about like bad websites? There has to be bad websites. And then this was my answer. Mm. Some require a dangerous wild animal license, but many require no license at all, including boa constrictors, large monitor lizards, and even Komodo dragons. Okay. So he's talking about not requiring danger dangerous animal licenses. So I think this is like the turning point of, I, I also answered that question. They cut it, but, <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, like boa constrictors, boa constrictors are some of the nicest snakes in existence. Yeah. And like to be like, you don't have to have a dangerous animal license. In general, for the most part, reptile owners and businesses are responsible mm -hmm. 
but there's always going to be a few people that make all of it look bad. Yeah. And also Komodo dragons. Did he? Oh, he said Komodo. He dragons? did say Komodo dragons. This is incredibly easy to get. If I wanted any kind of reptile, I could just do it right now. And I reckon, yeah, I wouldn't need to find out much information. Wouldn't need to speak to anyone. Sometimes you can go through the queue and you can't, you don't even find out you can't get this reptile until right before you order. Yeah. So just opening up a website and going, oh, I can buy any of these. It's That's, misleading. Yeah, it's very misleading. Captive bred animals are not a problem. Responsible breeders are not a problem. Information is the issue. Mm. Information and irresponsible importers or animal smugglers, that's where the issue lies. Yeah. And then that's where it comes in. It's the person, the keeper's responsibility to provide the best care for that animal. I'm shocked at how many reptiles are available online and with next to no warnings or guidance on just how complex their needs are. What happens when the owners yeah. can't cope? Correct. Yeah, and that's the case with any animal mm -hmm. if you get a dog it is on you to learn how to take care of that dog yeah specific dogs have specific problems like hip dysplasia mm -hmm. big dogs it's a common thing it's something you should know knowing how long an animal's going to live that's mm -hmm. important what type of foods are going to be best for the animals mm -hmm. like our dog we our dog has an allergy to what was it beef? chicken and beef chicken and beef yep and fleas and, and was, the outdoors in general <laughs> and that was our responsibility to figure out what was going on with that animal it's a very expensive responsibility yes but we got there mm -hmm. everything that's being said here can literally be applied to any pet yeah like like i feel like to a degree he's missing the point you know what i mean yeah like he's 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 constantly putting all the responsibility back on the breeders, which mm -hmm. I mean there should be some responsibility on the breeders, but the fact that he made that comment about like oh you can just you can just buy it and then it comes to your house and then it's your responsibility. I mean, the the way he states that, the way that this video is edited anyway, it almost makes it sound like it shouldn't be your responsibility, and that's 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 a little bit of a problem because. Like, as we keep saying over and over again, it is your responsibility. The RSPCA rescues around one and a half thousand reptiles each year. Their specially trained exotics officers are on the front line responding to call outs of unwell, abandoned or neglected reptiles. We don't live in the UK, um, so we don't know anything about the RSPCA or how they handle their animals or their reputation or anything. Yeah. So basically all of the animals um, when they come into us, they get a quick health check and then they come in here for their quarantine period, which is 30 days. I do like the fact though that he talks about quarantine mm -hmm. because quarantining is very important when you get a new reptile. You have to be informed when you get any sort of pet, no matter mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah, because my I had a pet when I was a little kid and um, at the t I didn't know better. I didn't research at the time. I was a little kid. My parents didn't research for me at the time. so. We were unaware, but basically all we were told is this reptile just needs a heat rock. And now that the reptile needed a lot more. And like, even looking back on it, like to this day, like I kind of feel I like, I mean, I definitely feel bad. Mm -hmm. I feel bad that I was unaware of how to take care of that reptile because that reptile could have lived such a better life. Mm -hmm. And I feel really bad about it. Because he didn't have anywhere to retreat to. So the set, when we went into the house to, to get him sign over and take him to us, I opened the tank and he immediately started whipping and really? puffing himself up just because he didn't have anywhere to go, unfortunately. Such a beautiful it's, animal. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that a different I was say, one? The first one that showed was very healthy looking. Yeah. You know, the more the more education and the more information we can get out there, the better. And I think that's, that's the end goal is to reduce the amount of animals coming into us. That's a very admirable mm -hmm. service to do something like that. I 100% agree with that. Education and information. Mm -hmm. That is, like, I feel like that's how things get fixed. Yeah, it's uh, called US ARC, and basically they just, like, kind of look out for the reptile keepers. Um, they, yeah, like, there's a lot of times they're trying to, like, pass bills and stuff to prevent people from keeping reptiles, so they kind of are looking out for all that, and, yeah. And I think it's very unfortunate, too, that, like, this... This video came out on the day that like US ARC was announcing that the Lacey Act, like those amendments for the um, that would affect that would have affected the reptile trade and the just animals. Thunder. And uh, that would have affected like people keeping animals and it was like a celebratory time. And then this came out, I think on that same day or the night before, I'm not really sure, but it came out right around that time. And I think it's just super 
unfortunate, I guess, because a lot of times people look at things and they're like, oh, well, we just need to ban it. We need to ban it, and that's how we fix this. But that's not how you fix things. Yeah. The thing, though, he is, I feel like he's making it sound like, is like, it almost sounds like that he's saying a majority of these animals are being yeah just like i feel like the information in this was good information but it was just set up very dramatically yeah and in a very misleading way mm -hmm. that almost looks bad not almost it does look bad on reptile keepers when the point of all of it was supposed to be just do research. I feel like that was the point they were trying to make. I can see that that was the point that they were trying to make, but I think that point was kind of lost mm -hmm. when it was, I guess, sensationalized and made very dramatic. It almost leads you, leaves you with like a negative taste in your mouth for yeah. the whole thing. It almost kind of puts off like a, a, when you watch one of those documentaries about poachers. Yeah. You know I mean, because like, you know, that's a bad situation. Mm -hmm. But it, it almost kind of puts off that vibe here. Like, oh, all these people are just buying animals and they're just dying. Yeah. They're and just then going out in the wild. It's also frustrating, too. Like, so when people. <laughs> when people realized that puppy mills existed, everyone's goal was shut down the puppy mills. Mm -hmm. Not puppies shouldn't be kept as pets. And I think that's just kind of a double standard where here, instead of everyone focusing on let's get proper information so that these animals are cared for correctly, it's should reptiles even be kept as pets. And that's like just a huge double yeah. standard. It's very irritating. Yeah. But that is it for this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my social and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I've got a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is here and this week's subscriber shout is here thank you so much for liking and following and subscribing and commenting and sharing and all that jazz you are the bee's knees thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a fantastic day bye, bye. i think so yeah because as they're bred in captivity more and more and people learn about them more and more and they do start to learn like i my children aren't afraid of reptiles they think reptiles are really cool so like as you have this whole generation coming up of not being afraid of these things and reptiles being kept normally i think that yeah they are becoming more popular and will continue to become more popular well i i mean problems that could arise would be improper care but i hope that in more and more people keeping these animals more and more information is being spread about the proper care and more and more attention is being paid to those chain pet stores that are giving out uh incorrect information and outdated information and we learn more and they live better. Yeah, I think 100% our responsibility is to use these platforms that we have to get that information out to people, to show them the differences and to just use what we have, like use this resource that we have to hopefully get that information to more people. I hope I don't get sued. Why'd you get sued? You didn't say nothing bad. I didn't say anything bad. You, you talk about them, you never discredit them, never said anything bad. All the only thing you said is you feel like you basically the editing was very misleading.